you'll notice that just because he's seen the Father and the Son and he's received these glorious uh, revelations and told that his sins were forgiven and, and told don't join any of the churches at this point, just wait, you'll, you would think he's had this pinnacle experience and from here his life is just going to get easy, his life is going to be simple, kind of like a person who has overwhelming spiritual experiences that convince them that Jesus is the Christ, that the Lord wants them to repent of their sins and to get baptized into the church of Jesus Christ and to move forward on the covenant path, that from that point on everything's going to be easy and simple. Yeah, you're going to notice that as we proceed through the rest of this curriculum year studying the Doctrine and Covenants in church history, that very few things seem to come easily to this prophet. Just because God gives you revelation and answers and direction and a calling doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're going to live a life of ease, that it's going to be pain-free, that everybody's going to love you and accept you and, and applaud you for all the good things you're doing. Sometimes it will actually increase the opposition when you move forward. But brothers and sisters, we're here as a trial of our faith to be proven and to be tested and to learn and grow from our own experience to distinguish these, these good and evil uh, choices that we have in front of us as you move forward. Notice in verse 18 he says, my object in going to inquire of the Lord was to know which of the sects was right, that I might know which to join. Again, there's that agency. I I'm willing to act. I'll do whatever you want me to do, God. And uh, notice that they, they answered in verse 19 that he should join none of them. And then the Lord gives Joseph some some clarification halfway down through verse 19. They draw near to me with their lips, their hearts are far from me. They teach for doctrines the commandments of men, having a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Brothers and sisters, this brings us to a really important point as we, as we contemplate the first vision event. We can, we can study everything that anybody has ever said or written about this event, we can do everything we can to try to, to explain it away or to try to prove it to somebody, but at the end of the day, those effort, efforts are probably going to be pretty futile. futile. Uh, notice we can't deny the power of godliness. We can't deny the influence of the Holy Ghost as we work through the process of time seeking truth and it just won't do to kneel down on one occasion or to have just one fast and say, help me to know if this is true. Things in the scriptures usually take time where God gives you experiences where it then opens channels of communication where then the revelation can have context, it can mean something to you, it can cause you to then use your agency to become something more like Jesus that we're all seeking, rather than just having it be a curiosity question. I want to know, is Joseph a prophet versus, dear God on high, I am willing to do whatever you want me to do in my life, and it would make a big difference if I knew if what Joseph said is true. Give me experiences, please. Teach me. Guide me. Help me know what to study. Help me know what to, to believe and where to express faith uh, so that I can learn by study and also by faith to come to know the truth because once I know the truth, the truth will set me free and I can move forward and actually uh, fulfill the missions that thou hast given me. Now you'll notice he describes something at the bottom of verse 20. Uh, he says, it seems as though the adversary was aware at a very early period of my life that I was destined to prove a disturber and an annoyer of his kingdom, else why should the powers of darkness combine against me? Why the opposition and persecution that arose against me almost in my infancy?" And then he describes how in the next few verses how he talked to some people, including this, this preacher, a, a friend, he thought, uh, and he was greatly surprised at his behavior of, of this Methodist preacher. He treated my communication not only lightly but with great contempt, saying it was all of the devil. Once again, Joseph can look at him 
and knowingly say, oh no, that wasn't of the devil. I can tell you what's of the devil, and I don't want to spend any more time in that realm. Uh, and the preacher telling him there is no such thing as visions or revelations in these days. All such things ceased with the apostles, and that there would never be any more of them. Now, to finish this off, um, notice verse 25. After talking about Paul or Saul from the New Testament being, being questioned and told that he was crazy and that he didn't know what he was talking about, then Joseph says in verse 25, so it was with me. I had actually seen a light, and in the midst of that light I saw two personages, and they did in reality speak to me. And though I was hated and persecuted for saying that I had seen a vision, yet it was true. And while they were persecuting me, reviling me, and speaking all manner of evil against me falsely for so saying, I was led to say in my heart, why persecute me for telling the truth? I have actually seen a vision, and who am I that I can withstand God, or why does the world think to make me deny what I have actually seen? For I had seen a vision. I knew it, and I knew that God knew it, and I could not deny it. Neither dared I do it. At least I knew that by so doing I would offend God and come under condemnation. President J. Reuben Clark gave a famous talk entitled The Charted Course for the Church in Education. In that talk he said, there are two truths that are more important than anything we can teach in, in gospel settings. Number one, he even called them the latitude and longitude. It's this, it's, it's like a X marks the spot kind of a thing to, to give us this perspective of here we stand. Number one, it is most important for us to know that Jesus is the Christ. And number two, he said, is that we've got to know that Joseph is his prophet, that he was chosen by God and the Heavenly Father in Jesus Christ did indeed appear to the prophet Joseph in that grove on that day, setting in motion this glorious restoration, which happened in 1820. But brothers and sisters, this restoration had been building for centuries through all of those, those uh, Middle Ages and through the Protestant Reformation setting the stage for the uh, revolution, for these pilgrims to come over to the New World to set up a place where religious freedom could be uh, lived that then sets the stage for this restoration. Um, again, Elder Bednar talks about how sometimes light turns on like a light bulb, and other times the light shines as a slow, steady growth as if it's a sunrise. So for hundreds of years you get this slow growing of the light, even through the Renaissance, this rebirth of light, this, this dawning of seeing things more clearly, and then all of a sudden, spring of 1820, it's as if the sun is now fully visible and we begin the final dispensation of all the Gospels, the dispensation of the fullness of times. Brothers and sisters, of all the things uh, we could say, rather than trying to convince you one way or the other, let me just finish with what I know for myself. I know by the power of the Holy Ghost that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I know that Joseph Smith is his prophet, that he did indeed see the Father and the Son, and they spoke to him, and they commissioned him, and they gave him power and authority and a mission to fulfill, and now here we are 201 years later after this event still carrying forth that powerful testimony that was planted into the earth on that day over 200 years ago. 
know that he lives, know that he still guides the church today through living prophets, seers and revelators, and that if we'll put our faith in Christ, he will help us carry forth the kingdom triumphantly into all the world. And I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.